There are six tear points located around the edge of the packaging. It is important to use these points when opening, as it is difficult or impossible to tear the package otherwise. Using the tear points, the package can be opened horizontally across the top or bottom of the package, as well as vertically along one side. Pack combat gauze into the wound. It is vital that you get the gauze into contact with the arterial or venous breach and do not simply cover the wound with the gauze. Be aware that a large injury may require more than one combat gauze to pack the wound fully. Any excess gauze should be used to apply pressure over the wound after packing. Pack the wound completely and fully, including filling any gaps or channels away from the main wound. A wound may not always present as a round hole. Regardless of the wound's size or shape, you must fill it completely with combat gauze. Start at the source of bleeding and work outward, packing the space tightly with the gauze as you go. Small caliber gunshot wounds and small shrapnel wounds can be very challenging. Again, it is vital that you get combat gauze into the wound and into contact with the source of bleeding. Once the wound is fully packed, use any excess gauze to continue to apply pressure over the wound for at least three minutes. It is important to maintain consistent pressure. Do not push up and down on the wound or move the gauze unnecessarily. Do not lift the gauze away from the wound to see if bleeding has stopped. Use your issued pressure dressing or other appropriate materials to bandage the wound tightly, securing the combat gauze in place once bleeding has stopped. The dressing should both maintain pressure on the wound and prevent further contamination of the injury site. Once the dressing is secured, tuck the empty combat gauze package into the outer wrap to alert receiving medical personnel that combat gauze has been used. Prior to patient transport, do not forget to mark the casualty card in the appropriate location indicating that a hemostatic agent has been used. As discussed in the Directions for Use videos, the key to successful use of combat gauze is to pack the gauze into the wound deeply so that it comes into contact with the source of bleeding. You must also pack enough gauze into the wound to completely fill any open space. A large wound might require you to use more than one combat gauze. Don't forget to check for an exit wound or additional wounds. Any excess gauze should be used to apply pressure over the wound for at least three minutes. After at least three minutes of pressure, ensuring bleeding has stopped, 
apply a pressure dressing over the combat gauze to maintain pressure and to protect the wound from further contamination. In rare instances, active bleeding may continue even after your initial application of combat gauze. The probable cause of this is failure to place the hemostatic agent into contact with the source of bleeding. In the event that prior attempts at stopping bleeding were ineffective due to improper product placement or other factors beyond the caregiver's control, any combat gauze or standard gauze in the wound should be removed. Excess pooled blood should be swept away. The point of bleeding should be visualized if possible, and a fresh combat gauze should be packed into the wound consistent with the product instructions. Remember that once the new combat gauze is packed into the wound, you must still apply at least three minutes of pressure before proceeding with the application of a pressure dressing.